Welcome to this little test drive where I'm going to try out the React query library made by Tana Linsley. And Tana Linsley has done a lot of great stuff for the community. For example, he has the React table that I also used in some video a long time ago. And I want to check out this React query library because it's actually awesome. And it's a library for React where you have some hooks for fetching async data. A lot of people talk about GraphQL and that it's the new thing, but actually REST APIs are used the most still, and you probably will have to handle REST APIs in a dev job. So the great about this is that you have almost exact the same API as you have with Apollo Client when you fetch data with a GraphQL API. So that's what I love about it. It's really simple actually, and the transition to using GraphQL will be easy also because you have, as I said, almost the same API. So that's great. So this is the library. I'm just going to scratch the surface and try it out. And hopefully this will get you going. I'm actually using this now in a real world application in a project that I'm working on for a client. So uh, it's been great actually, and it has made my job a lot more easier. So let's get to it. I've created this boilerplate stuff in React with the Create React app. So I set up this uh, component here. I'm going to have a state where I change the pages. I'm not going to use that quite yet. I'll use this later because first I want to show you how easy it is to fetch some data just straight out of the box with no pagination and stuff like that. And I'm using the Staros API for this one. As you can see, React Query wants you to have an async function or um, as they say, a function that is thenable you have to have a promise that you can use then on. Or in my case, I'm using the async and await. So this will return the data in a JSON format from the Star Wars API. And yeah, for now, I just have some, some gibberish uh, JSX here. I, oh, no, I have this button here that I'm going to use to change pages later on. I have this application here. And as you can see, it does nothing now. So we have to first install the library. npm i react dash query. That's how easy it is. And wait for it. And then I'll type npm start and we can get going. And for this one, I'm not going to do any styling either because I want to focus on the library itself. So let's say that we want to fetch this data here. The first thing you have to do is, of course, import something from the React query library. And for this simple use, we have something that's called use query from React dash query. So that is the hook we're going to use for a very simple use case where we don't have any pagination or stuff like that. And the only thing we have to do now is to create a very similar to Apollo client line here. So we just structure out some properties here. We have the status, we have the data and the error. We just structure them out from the use query hook and the use query hook needs a key and the key is in an array, but you don't have to use an array in this simple use case. It will transform it into an array automatically for you. So you can just have a key, you can name it whatever you want. This key has to be unique, and every time it changes, it will refetch the data. So if it's still the same, it won't refetch the data. So we have this key, and then we give it our fetch function. Like that, and this will grab the data. That's the only thing you have to do. It will handle the loading state for you, and it will give you the data in the data property here. And also, if there's some error, you will get it in the error property. Okay, uh, so what we can do now is, for example, if status equals to loading return, we can return a div that says loading like that. And if error, no, if, yeah, if error return, and uh, we have a div something went really wrong. 
Oh no. Yeah, something like that. And then we can loop over our data here and show it in the DOM. And for this one, I'm going to remove this stuff here and we can just do, do a regular BR tag. So we have the data and from the Star Wars API, we have a property that's called results and I map through it. We have the element and the index, an inline arrow function. And I'm going to return a P tag. It needs to have a key, otherwise it will complain at me. And we have the element dot name like that. So this is everything you have to do. We are fetching data from the API. Uh, hopefully I haven't tried it yet, so I save it. And we'll see what happens. Yeah, you can see we have the data here. So, so we got a fully working application that fetches data from a REST API with just one line of code, um, uh, or maybe that's a little lie because I have to create the function here uh, and also we have to map through it. But the actual fetch hook is just one line of code. And I used to do these hooks myself. This way I don't have to do this boilerplate code all the time. You can use this hook and you have the data. It's really that simple. So that's great. That is a very simple use case if you don't have any pagination. And pagination, they actually have special hooks for that use also. And there's also a lot of other hooks, for example, for infinity scrolls and stuff like that. But I'm going to show you the pagination hook also. And for that one, we have something that's called use paginated query. You could, of course, as they say in the documentation, you could fetch it with this one, but the DOM will get re-rendered all the time and the list of people here when we change page will disappear and you may not want that. So if we use the other hook, that is a special hook for pagination, if we press the next page, it will not delete these ones until it has fetched the other data so you won't get any flickering in the DOM and stuff like that. So we have the use paginated query. And for now, I can just comment out that one. And we're going to destructure out some other stuff here. We have the status. We have something that's called resolved data. We have the error and is fetching. Uh, and we grab it from use paginated query. And for this one, as we want to send in the page as a variable, we have to have the array here. And the first one is the key, just as before. Star Wars. Yeah, it's getting really long here now. But bear with me. Okay, and then we have the page variable that I want to send along with this one. And that one I have in the state up here. So the button is going to increase this value when we press the button. And then we give it the fetch data function. Fetch like that and do some order formatting. All right, so that's how you do it with a use paginated query. We also have to do some stuff with our fetch function here because now we have a variable and also the first argument that is passed to this function is the key. So we have to have the key even if we're not using it there. And we have the page, we can default it to one and also I have to modify this here, page equals, and then I'll just add the page here. So that's my modified fetch function for the, for the pagination. Okay, so I think we're good to go. We, we are grabbing data here. And I'll also add a little loading message here also. So we have the property is fetching. If it is fetching, I just do a short circuit here. I want to show a div with loading. Like so. And this is because when we fetch the new data here on a new page, the status loading will not change. So it will not have the status loading. We don't want the UI to re-render 
So we can check if it's loading with the is fetching instead. I urge you to read more about it in the documentation. I actually just started using this myself, so I don't have this deep knowledge of the library. I was just amazed how easy it is, and I wanted to create this video to show you the very basic stuff so you can try it out yourself. Okay, well, and we have the button. And instead of the data, we have the result data for this one. So I have to change this one here. Result data and map through that instead. So I think we're good to go now. I save it. Yeah, as you can see, and if I click the next page, you can see that loading appears up there and it changed the page. So this is also quite easy if you want to have pagination in your fetch. Uh, and as I said, read more in this documentation because it's awesome. I think you're going to love it if you start using it. Uh, especially me that I'm quite used to Apollo client. So I really love this one that it's uh, really, really similar to that API. I hope this was useful for you. And if you like my channel and the stuff I do, please support me by subscribing and see you in another one.